So recently, Mike Isertel made a surprise video about veganism. Not about plant-based nutrition for athletes, but actually about the moral principles of veganism. I always admire when people talk about important topics, especially when it's off topic from their channel. So I definitely respect Mike for making such a video. If you guys haven't checked it out, I suggest you do. It's almost an hour long, but it's really good content. So in Mike's video, he gave 10 factors for deciding on meat consumption. Pain and suffering. Fact of the matter is being killed feels bad for almost all animals, most animals, okay? And for very many animals, including very commonly farm ones, uh, chickens to a pretty good extent, cows to a huge extent, and pigs to an enormous extent, probably being killed and slaughtered and being factory farmed feels terrible, really, 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 really bad, right? But to put this in context, there are degrees here. So there's a spectrum. So the first thing he went over was the hierarchy of moral value, which I agree with. So in short, the higher the sentience of a life form, the higher its moral value. For example, a human has a higher moral value than a pig, and a pig has a higher moral value than a chicken. On a one-to-one -one basis, comparing one of each animal to each other, this fact is correct, and I agree with this hierarchy. If I was locked in a room with a pig and a human, and I was forced to kill one of them, the rational decision is to kill the pig because it has a lower moral value. However, it's important to think about the real world. In the real world, people eat a certain amount of meat, so the size of the animal and how much meat it provides matters. Mike ranks killing a cow as a bigger bad than killing chickens, but a lot of chickens need to be killed to provide the equivalent amount of meat as a single cow, so the total suffering could be higher. Also, there are factors outside the killing of the animal which can cause pain and suffering to other animals and humans. Bycatch kills dolphins, which he would probably rank above pigs. Farming of cows is terrible for the environment, and if it were abolished, it would reduce human suffering from climate change. Number two is what I term political precedent. So a lot of times in discussions, uh, certain types of vegans, not all, not, not remotely all, will say, listen, you're okay with eating animals, right? But you know, if we take an animal of a certain ability, let's say a pig or a cow, and we try to find a human with that same mental ability, right? Because we're saying it's it's maybe okay to eat animals because they're mentally, they don't suffer as much as humans and we don't care about them as much for that reason. So he's like, when we're eating pork, we justify it by saying like, whatever, like pigs don't really suffer, suffer like we do, which is probably true. But, you know, they still suffer a crap load. We'll get to that again later. So then you start thinking, okay, what if we take an equivalent human intellectually to a pig? Do we care about them? And if we don't care about them, if it's like intellectual ability and ability to suffer, if we scale a human down, actually find a real human that's roughly the intellectual equivalency of a pig, which you can find with severely mentally disabled folks, then is it okay to eat mentally disabled folks? And here's the deal. There's a profoundly good reason why it's not nearly the same thing and not nearly okay. And we have some kind of remotely arbitrary rule set to which one of those people fall, uh, which one of those sides people fall on. This becomes wildly untenable. It is very likely to destabilize society. And of course, a destabilized society means no more Elon Musk, no more Tesla, no more Amazon food delivery, no more refrigeration, no more cooling, no more modern medicine, and we're all back in the gutter and the jungle, right? So really, really bad for everyone, right? What this does. This line of reasoning renders the so it's okay to eat mentally disabled people argument as very, very weak, okay? So if you're unaware, this is Mike's argument against the argument from marginal cases or the name the trait argument. So Mike's argument is that killing low IQ humans or marginal case humans would destabilize society. I don't disagree with that point, However, think about it like this, Mike gave that as the only reason why it would be more bad than killing animals with similar intelligence. Based on his arguments, it would be okay in a hypothetical scenario 
to kill humans with a low IQ if it weren't to destabilize society. Of course, I doubt he believes that, it just highlights the contradiction. He can't explain why it's more morally bad to kill a marginal case human, only why it's bad in a practical sense. So based on his argument, he's deeming low IQ humans to have no intrinsic moral value, only extrinsic moral value, in that it would cause problems for society. Using a real world example, killing pigs in today's world doesn't destabilize society. Is that a good justification to kill pigs, even though they're highly intelligent? I also think the mass killing of pigs would destabilize society if it weren't for carnism and keeping things hidden behind closed doors. A small dog killing festival caused an uproar in western countries. If all the pigs in factory farms were replaced by dogs and it got a lot of immediate attention, I think that would cause riots in the streets and destabilize society. So another argument against this point is that it's actually irrational how civil unrest doesn't occur from the killing of billions of animals. In a hypothetical world, if this irrational ideology caused no issues for society to kill low IQ humans, would that make it okay? Number three is rights reciprocity ability. Okay, a little, a little thought experiment. You take a room, completely closed off room, nowhere to run. You take a vegan, a very good person, a uh, bowl of water, and adult gigantic male pig, okay? And you just don't give them any food for forever. Eventually, the pig will almost certainly eat the vegan. So the pig is unable to respect rights. And if animals cannot respect human rights, there is a pretty decent beginning of a moral argument that says, why should humans respect their rights back? If a man managed to kill a crocodile to attack them in the wild, that's self-defense and it's justified. But what if that man instead captured crocodiles and bred them into the billions and locked them up in factory farms and had them endure massive suffering for humans to eat? Would the justification for all that be because they're assholes? No. If cows were very aggressive animals, it wouldn't make it more moral to kill them for meat because they're factory farmed, and therefore they're not violating human rights. If there was a situation where aggressive cows from the wild entered society and started attacking humans, then his point would be more valid. So his point would only hold true in certain scenarios. Only humans can do a couple of real cool tricks, which gives them a huge unique advantage to the argue of why it's especially bad to try to farm people. And conversely, why vegan arguments that say, why don't we just farm people, don't really hold a ton of water. The mere existence of humans, combined with thermonuclear weapons, uh, a, a extra atmospheric delivery capacity, and advanced targeting, is like the greatest thing that's ever happened to planet Earth, as far as the cons conservation of the biome. I don't know. I just found this point kind of funny, because I think he praises the human race so much. Humans kill billions of animals and have enough nukes to destroy the planet many times over. Based on previous human history, it's easier to speculate that humans will have a net negative for life on this planet. So that's all his factors that I disagree with. I do disagree with a few of his other points, but not as strongly as the ones I went over. It's funny because I actually agree with a lot of stuff he said in the video, but there are a few things at the end that I heavily disagreed with. If you hunt uh, animals that we sort of have uh, designated as not likely to become extinct and naturally overpopulate anyway, then you're very morally defensible. So if you go upstate and shoot a deer and bring it back and make venison out of it and eat it all bloody, uh, the most hardcore vegans in almost all cases, if they're being intellectual about it and have followed through this whole thing, they should be like, yeah, word up, that seems fine, right? That deer is going to die anyway. It could die from like a hobbling, nasty 10-day illness where finally like various critters just eat it from the inside out or you know at the prime of its life it could get zapped with one bullet never feel a thing and then make some other people happy with its body so the justification he gave being overpopulation and they'd probably endure greater suffering in the wild 
but humans are the biggest polluters of the environment. This justification would make it okay to kill an overpopulation of terminally ill patients. I'm not denying there could be a situation where culling overpopulated species would have a net positive for the environment, but that is besides the point. The point is, is that argument is a contradiction because we wouldn't do that to ourselves. Culling of marginal case humans would have a net positive for the environment, but obviously we don't prescribe to that idea because it's immoral. So why do people think it's okay to do that to animals and not humans? And when lab-grown meat comes around, your boy's going vegan too. And everyone should, because it's sweet. First of all, you get to eat made out of a lab. That's cool, because it's all sciencey. You feel like Dolph Rundgren from Rocky IV. Uh, and also, it's just super convenient, great environmental benefits, no suffering, all the way down the line. This is something I hear a lot from people. They'll definitely switch the lab meat when it becomes a thing. My question is, why? If they have no moral problems with eating meat currently, then why would they go vegan when lab meat becomes a thing? It's like self-admission that they believe there's issues with eating meat. Mike said a few times that veganism is a morally superior position. Listen, I'll, I'll do your yeah. piece for you here. I think you are morally very much in the right. I think vegans have the moral high ground in almost every situation. I think that a lot of people are not nearly like myself. They like to not think about things. They have never visited a factory farm. They don't know how it all works. And I hope more people do get exposure to that. And I hope more people stop eating meat when they find that it conflicts with their values because for the love of God, some of that shit is, all of it is so fucked up, it's difficult to put into words. So I think you, I think you guys are doing a great thing, full on support of the vegan community. Uh, and, and I think that hopefully in the future, fewer and fewer people will eat meat and eventually we can never harm animals again. All right. And um, last question for you. Like, do you still consider veganism a morally superior position? Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So if he believes there's currently an issue with eating meat, then why would he wait years and cause unnecessary suffering in that time until a huge innovation in food production happens? Now, you might say that the benefits from eating meat probably outweigh the negatives for him, but the only benefit from eating meat, he said in his video, is taste, enjoyment, and culture. And he said that's barely a concern. Meat wins, but not by much. And in 10 or 20 years, a lot of meat-like products, hopefully laboratory-grown meat will be up there anyway. But even if it's not, a lot of meat-like products taste damn close to meat. And this is like number 10, let's be honest, is a frivolous concern. Like, you know, if we're like destroying the lives of, you know, giving birth to and then destroying the lives of like 10 million pigs a year, well, it's very difficult to justify that just on like, oh, I just like how they taste. Waiting for a realistic simulation of a very unethical act that provides little pleasure is not a justification to currently commit that unethical act. If you're not cool with doing so much harm, you can do some things and still hang on to eating chickens, pigs, and cows, and other animals like that. Consider purchasing from slash advocating for more humane and environmentally friendly farming conditions, right? This is a really big thing that can make a huge impact and actually bring you very close to veganism on the sort of total moral calculus here. Unfortunately, there are many problems with this idea. So number one, an animal still gets killed very early on in its life on a humane farm. Number two, the ideal friendly farm would have no financial incentive to exist. Why would a farm be willing to let a cow live out its long lifespan using up resources instead of killing it very early on when it reaches peak size? Therefore, the ideal friendly farm is very unlikely to exist. Number three, this isn't practical for the whole planet to follow. Humane farms require more space and resources. A benefit of factory farming is that it's efficient and uses fewer resources per kg of meat. So these humane farms could be more problematic to humans than factory farming. Number four, it's very difficult to know if a farm is humane and these standards are not followed a lot of the times. Cage-free eggs could just mean thousands of chickens in one big cage a factory farm. 
And number five, there's nothing friendly or humane about killing an animal unnecessarily. If you care about animal welfare and the welfare of the planet as an ecosystem a lot, and you really want to do the most good, I would recommend in my analysis of what's going on for you to put as much resources as you're capable or interested in putting into, into advocating for humanizing, right, making more humane, and cleaning up, reducing the environmental impact of factory farming first. That's where you can do the most good. Because of what I just mentioned, this isn't good advice. Also, it shouldn't be about what is most effective at decreasing harm. It should be about advocating the right message. If me telling criminals to just shoplift humanely decreased overall harm, I wouldn't say it. Instead, I'd just tell them to stop shoplifting. Telling people to eat from humane farms and eat less meat reinforces the belief that eating meat is okay. So this is a confusing message, and I even question its efficacy. It's like telling people to be less racist in order to reduce harm from racism. So again, I don't disagree with everything in Mike's video. It's a good video, and I do recommend you give it a watch. Let me know what you think in the comments.